Kentucky, but but I, I'm if my research is correct, we've got Gen Alpha here. Yeah, give it up for Gen Alpha. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, we are delighted to have everyone here. If you are new, we welcome you, and uh, there are restrooms back there, and water, and mints. And uh, it's going to be a little different service structure because it is Family Sunday. And the big difference uh, for you non-Gen Alpha people who are givers financially to our church is that there won't be an official time in the middle of the service. So you can give at any time in the three ways that you know to give. You can do it at the beginning or at the end or whatever you're comfortable with. So I give to you the worship team. Scripture says is higher than any other name. It's the only name that has been given to men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah, there's no other name. It's the name of Jesus.
this God we speak of this morning could be seen as a great paradox. I don't mean to put you off by getting into theology or orthodoxy, but our Christianity seems to say something significant about who our God claims to be. Because half of who this God is just doesn't seem to make sense. Our brain can't seem to logically connect that this God is fully God and fully man, lion and lamb, baby and king, alpha and omega, beginning and end. But the question we must answer is, do we believe he is who he says he is? Because from A to Z, it seems God has been perfectly spelled out for every ear to hear and eye to see. A is for Alpha. He was there at the beginning of all things. Adonai Almighty created everything yet subjected himself to the ailments of humanity. B is for Beloved. God's only begotten Son, the brilliance, the express image of God. His blood was shed, his body, the bread of life broken for us. C is for creator of all things, seen and unseen, yet was crucified on a tree. He is comforter. In the midst of troubles, Christ is full of compassion. D is for devoted, the root of David, who was determined to deliver his dear children, who dared to walk as a child himself, yet was completely divine in nature. E is for eternal, Elohim, Emmanuel, everlasting, yet fully present with us, empathetic to our weakness, for the Most High was also subjected to them, yet he did not sin. F is for Father, faithful forevermore, fair in his judgment and discipline, yet never ceases to offer forgiveness. G is for God, humble and meek, girded in frailty, yet is adorned in glory and greatness, the greatest of all time, the goat and the lamb who was slain, who is the name above every other name. H is for holy, holy, holy. All blessing and honor and glory belongs to our healer, helper, hope for humanity. All honor is his from now until heaven. I is for incomparable to any other. He is immovable, the great I am, who is so much higher than I and you. Yet he entered into our midst and invites us into his presence. J is for this Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is come to bring justice where there is harm, joy where there is mourning, jubilee where there is weariness. K is for king of kings. For every rightful king deserves a processional fit for a king, yet our king is humble and meek, whose kingdom has been established not by force but in peace. And he will come back in glory with an entrance fit for the king. L is for the light of the world, the Lord whose love has brought light into our layers of lawlessness, forever laying night to rest and let the light of life in. M is for the Most High, maker mighty in power, yet merciful to our mistakes, marvelous in splendor, yet meets our every need, majestic in wonder, but willing to mend me. N is for near, Jesus is the name above every other name. He is enthroned in the heavenly places and he chose us to be the place his spirit would find residence. O is for the one, is what we are in him, just as he and the Father are one. We are one body, one church, united in one spirit. P is for praiseworthy, worthy of every precious breath we breathe. Our Prince of Peace keeps true to his promise. He preserves us with the power of the Holy Spirit and protects his people from the Prince of the power of the air. He is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith ever patient with us and present in our pain. Q is for quiet. He's always working behind the scenes and quiets our, quiets our anxious hearts consistently with his still, small voice. He is ever quick to listen to our pleas. R is for redeemer of mankind, righteousness incarnate. He is the ruler over all power and authority, yet he willingly laid down his life, subjecting himself to Roman crucifixion. But this was not the end for him. His resurrection changed everything. S is for the Son of God, Son of Man, Savior, salvation for everyone who believes, shepherd of all that was slain like a sheep, sustainer of our souls that was suspended on a tree, sacrificing his life selflessly. T is for trustworthy, the triumphant teacher whose death tore through time 
and infiltrated this timeline with his truth. He holds time in his hands, yet he still has time for you. You as for unmatched yet understanding, undefiled yet embraced an unjust death and was unflinching. He underwent the weight of God's wrath. V is for victorious over death, pain, and the vicious gates of hell. The veil is torn and every single thing that can separate us from him is vanquished. We stand firm, victorious in him. W is for worthy. Worthy is the lamb who was slain who willingly waded in the waters of death and washed us clean and all authority, all wisdom and honor and glory belongs to he who is worthy to open the scroll. He and only he is worthy. X is just a sideways version of what he was nailed to. He is the one who crossed out our transgressions, the one who comes after us even when we have double-crossed him. Y is for Yahweh, who in all his omnipotent majesty yearned to draw close to our frailty to make a home For Zion, the kingdom to come, where we will see Jesus fully God and fully man, lion and lamb, alpha and omega, beginning and end from A to Z, our God, who has finished everything and promised us this glorious destination, Zion. So prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is coming. Where the end is just the beginning. If you can join me, if we could just stand and give praise to the name of Jesus. He is worthy. He is worthy. Lord, and we offer you this offering of claps. Lord, as our honor of your name. You are worthy. You are worthy. Amen. Please have a seat. This Jesus, this Jesus is unlike anybody else. We do not get to compare him with any standard of man. We do not get to compare him with just the deity of Christianity. There is a reason he's been given the name above every other name. I want to talk about this. In Hebrews chapter 1, it says that Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God. And he's the exact imprint. The exact representation of God's nature. And he upholds all things in this universe by the power of his word. And after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is the name above all names. And he is God in flesh. Which is why we celebrate Christmas. We are not just celebrating a cute little baby. I love that Jesus came as a baby. Because that shows that he wasn't coming in all of his power like people expected. He used the unlikely form of humanity, the frail form of humanity, and he says, this is where redemption will come from. It was a plan that originated way before Jesus came. It was something that he had a desire in his heart. God's desire was that he would dwell with mankind that he would dwell among us that he would be our God and we would be his people but each of us have gone astray each of us have gone to our own way 
But in this place, in a small town, in a very tiny place in Bethlehem, in a poor person's home, comes the king of all creation. The king of the universe, not just the savior of the world. We, we love to skip to that part. But I want you to just pause for a second on this thought. The person we are talking about who came was the one who upholds all things by the power of his word. And he says, I will lay down everything I have to come and be with you. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, and each had six wings, and, and two he covered his face, and with two they covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory when Isaiah saw this it was a refrain that he was picking up of what is continually going on in heaven right now continually he is not just holy he is holy 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 he is completely set apart and that is why to put it in very simple terms I'm using this phrase, the greatest. The greatest of all time. Many of you younger people sitting here understand this phrase. We use this phrase, the goat, for pretty much anyone, right? As long as they're good at something, we're like, oh, that's a goat. Here you go. This is a goat. That's a goat. But there is only one who is completely set apart in every category there is. We all, as humans, have some part in us that, is, that we're not so great at. We're not great at everything. We're great at some things. But Jesus is the greatest of all time in every category. So which is why he is set apart. And that's what that word holy means. He is not in the same conversation. He's not on the same stat sheet. He's not in any of those ones that we would love to say, well, I guess you're at the top of that list. No, he's not on that list. He's in a totally different list. It's the God list. And he says, who will you liken me unto? We covered this last week if you were here. There is nobody like him. And right now there is a song that is being sung in heaven. And I want to sing that song for you. And I want you to join in with me. You can stay seated if you want. You can stand. But we're going to sing this song here. And I want you to understand that the one we're dealing with is the Holy One forever. There is nobody like Him. Not a single person.
above it all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above it all let's sing that again your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above it all dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cry. of your name Lord there is nobody like you there is nobody like you Lord Lord we acknowledge you as the Lord and King and we thank you Lord that you came to be with us and to raise us up in glory Hallelujah. amen have a seat so when we hear this song that is continually going on in the presence of God. All of the angels. All of creation. This is a song that is resonating right through the universe. Always. Sometimes when we think about, oh great, we go to a church service. Oh, we, we pick this service time. You are not just at a Christmas event. You are not at a Sunday service because that's what Christians do. We dedicate this time because we are saying you are worthy of that name. And we who bear his name. What does it mean to bear the name of someone? Right now, some of these kids in this front row here bear my name. Wherever they go, they're known by the name Thomas. That's who they are. They are identified by whose name they bear. So you sitting here on a Sunday morning, or whichever morning you pick, 
You dedicate time to say, I bear your name. I come to be before the one whose name I bear. So when I see others who bear his name, I'm like, you're siblings. You are people who call him Lord. There is coming a day where this will all be a place of worship for the King of Kings. But until then, we set up what we would call embassies of the Most High God. Right now, embassies of the Most High God are gathering in different places, in strange lands. Some lands where you do not have the privilege to meet like this. But we all bear his name. And I want you to just put a pin in that. What, is it, what does it mean for me to bear his name? Because we just talked about the name. Sam took us through an amazing journey through who this Jesus is. Now take all of that and say, I bear that name. I am called by that name. I'm, I'm, I'm a son or a daughter of that family. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, it says, Therefore, God highly exalted him because he chose to come in the form of frail human flesh. He laid aside his glory. He did not consider that his position of God was in some way going to be him. I'm going to be sitting with the dirt. I'm going to be trading in all of the things that I have. What if people think I'm dirty? Have you ever felt that feeling like when you're walking down the street where you know, you're in your jammies and someone catches you taking out the trash or something? Uh, what if people, like who cares? But we do care, right? There's that thought that goes through our head, what will people think of me? And when God enters the stage of human history, he had to consider that. He is laying aside all of his glory and he's saying, I'm stepping into the place of the people who ridiculed, who mocked my authority, and I'm stepping into that place in this form. Laying aside everything that he had for the sake of the joy set before him. What was that joy? They're sitting in front of me. You were the joy that was set before him. He said, I will go. He did not wait for you to get your act together. He did not wait for you to get it right. He saw our frailty and ran towards it. Knowing full well we would double cross him. But he knew that he was the only one who could do it. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the boss. Whenever you see that word, the Lord, you got to remember it's a, it's a phrase that is meant to say, you're the one who calls the shots. The problem is right now, it's an optional, right? It's an optional statement. Right now it is, I guess that's what Christians call their supreme being. He's their boss. But there is coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we're familiar with this verse. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. And this is the thing that we must understand. Every time we talk about God and his judgment for sin, 
There is a context that permeates our world that God is out to get us. But he saw our frailty and he says, I will go and I will rescue. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Why does he have the name that is above every other name? In Revelation 5, I'm just going to go through this quickly just so that you understand the context. Because this is something that is said a lot in church. Jesus has given the name above every other name. Well, okay. That's a nice phrase, but what does that mean? Why does he have the name above every other name? In Revelation 5, we get the expounding of this context. Because you see John standing there and he says, I saw the mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice in heaven, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? Now this is, of all the judgments of God that have been stored up, but the payment for sin for the, just, for the justice of God against sin is death. Not because God wants to see anyone perish. But the justice against sin is death. And he says, Father, I will not lose one. I will go. I will go after the lost one. I will go after the one who is broken. I will go after the one who is hopeless. I will go after the one sitting in darkness. And I will proclaim to them, salvation has come. I will proclaim to them, I have come near. To such people, he says, who is worthy to open the scroll? And I looked in heaven and on earth and under the earth and there was nobody found. Worthy to open the scroll. And then one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And this is what I want you to see. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals. Why? Why is Jesus worthy of this name? Why? For you were slain. And by your blood you ransomed people for God. From every tribe. And every language. And every people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests to our God. And they shall reign on the earth. This is why his name was worthy. It was only he who could be the one who could take that place of punishment. That place where his blood would ransom. Not one, not two. Not just, hey, if I liked you and I really wanted to save your life, I could give my life for you. But I could save you for a couple years. The grave is still going to get you. But Jesus says, I have come that they might have everlasting life. The union that we lost in the Garden of Eden, he says, I will restore that and I will come and make my home with them. So there's not a single one sitting in this room right now where God says, I have abandoned you. If you're sitting here saying, I feel hopeless, I feel like this is the situation is too dark. He says, I have come for you. You are not in a place where you're helpless. I am the only one who is worthy to take. I am the only one who is worthy to take all of your sin. If I wanted to absolve you of your sin, I couldn't. If I wanted to help you past some hurdle in your life, I couldn't. I could help you for a season. And then I'll run out of dollars. Or I'll run out of a home. Or I'll run out of encouragement. All of the things that I could do to help you, I would run out of. But God says, I will come and be with you. And I will be with you to the end of this age. The angel said to Mary, You will call his name 
Emmanuel. And in another portion it says, and you will call him Jesus. It's not two different names. Because he is God with us who has come to save his people. That's what those two words mean. He has come to be with us. But he has come that you might have salvation in all its fullness. Not just penalty of sin. We're talking about saving in every way. Saving from the brokenness of of, of what you have done, the things other people have done to you, all of those things. He says, I come near the weak, I come near the broken, I come near the destitute, the hopeless, and I will bring them life. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, and this is where I want to end. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether they're rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything that he might be preeminent. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Today, you and I are standing here because Jesus made peace by the blood of his cross. So if you have, we're going to share in communion together. Parents, if you've got your kids with you, This is an opportunity for you to share with them. This is a family meal. This isn't for people who look holy. This is for anyone who says, I belong to Jesus. I bear his name. So I receive this in faith, having placed my faith in the one whose name is above all names. When Jesus' body was broken on the cross for you, he was saying every ailment, every place of disrepair has been covered. He was broken that you might be made whole. Right now, there are people in this room who are struggling with things in their body. There are people in this room who are struggling with things in their mind right now. I want you to know that Jesus isn't just a Sunday God. Jesus isn't the Christian deity. He is the one who upholds all things by the power of his word. You think he is able to save you from your sin but leave you in darkness? You think he is able to help you with absolution from guilt, but he cannot help you with that relationship that you think is too difficult? Do you, do you see how we sometimes think, I should not talk to God about that. That's just my funk. That's just my, my stuff. I want you to know that he was broken for you, that you might be made whole. He will not leave you alone. He has come that you might have life and have it abundantly. So as you eat this bread, I want you to receive it not only for you, but for your household. And say, Lord, I receive what you have done. Wherever there is brokenness, I want to receive this. In Jesus' name, I receive this with faith. Similarly, when he went to the cross, his blood was shed. And this is why he has the name above every other name. Because it wasn't just the blood of goats. It wasn't just the blood of lambs. It wasn't some way to appease the anger of God. 
It was God himself laying himself on the line saying, I will go. I know they are unable. You are never, ever going to be holy the way God wants you to be holy on your own. You and I could have never have approached God by ourselves. But the desire in his heart was that he would live among us. And he says, I will do what is necessary to make that happen. So he goes and he says, I will ransom them from an enemy that was too powerful for them. Almost everyone sitting in this room, we do not have any claim to the promises of God just by our merit. We were not born into the promises of God. And he says, I have sent my son into the world that those who are under the gods of the nations, under spiritual forces, under dominions and authorities that were too powerful for them. They were chained in bondage to them. He says, I will go. And those who have sat in darkness will see a great light. I pray that as you receive this this morning, you're saying, Lord, you have made peace, not just for me, for my household and those that I hold dear. Lord, I cry out to you, Lord, that you would see the blood that you shed for my household. I acknowledge that you have the name above every other name and you are the God of every heart. We thank you for the peace that you have made through the blood of your cross. So we receive this with faith in Jesus' name. Lord, and as we have remembered the work that you have accomplished, we want to remember this morning, Lord, that you have come. We sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Lord, we receive you in our hearts this morning and in our homes. Lord, as we fellowship with our families, as we have fun, as we have cookies and amazing food and all of the things that we love so much. Lord, I ask that you would be present among us. Emmanuel, God who is with us. Holy Spirit, I ask for words from heaven. Words of prophecy, words of encouragement and wisdom, words of hope, words of deliverance. Lord, that these would be the gifts that are given out to today. Lord, that people would receive from your presence something that can only be given by the living God. Something that cannot be put under a tree. Something that cannot be bartered. Something that cannot be purchased for any price. But you have made a way that we could receive from your spirit. So Lord, I ask for gifts, Lord God, to be given out this morning. Lord, that we would receive you. That there would be room in our hearts to proclaim you King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. stand if we can.
Thank you. 
be seated. And blow out your candle as well. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. On a real quick personal note, um, here's something I love about my Savior. Um, 41 years ago, tomorrow morning, was the first time I set foot in this place. And I'm still here. And um, his mercies are new every morning. He reveals himself more every day to me and us. And, and thanks to our worship team this morning and Judah and the reading from Sam, anointed reading, I know more of my Savior than I did two hours ago. He's all... He's always giving more. Amen. A couple of quick announcements, if I can remember them. Next week, base camp and Generation Alpha will have a pajama party at the same time. Concurrent, okay? So, uh, Alan, you and I will not be wearing our pajamas. <laughs> at age, Medicare. <laughs> and uh, lastly... Uh, as we end today, there are cookies back there. So enjoy fellowship, calories, and carbohydrates together. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>